Hello and welcome back to the Not So Fit Couple podcast with your hosts, Lucy Davis and Benjamin Holden. And not even Foodie Fitness. Really? There she is. <laughs> this is a long time coming podcast. A very, very long time coming. And you're also one of our, we had this conversation before, one of our first other female guests. That's insane. We're not, we're not sexist, by the way. No, we're not. But we've just, it's, I don't know what it is. And if you can comment, if you're listening on YouTube or Spotify, can you comment on iTunes? No, you can't comment on iTunes. Give us, give us some, give us some ideas of who we can get on. Yeah, we do want to have more female guests who've got an array of opinions, but we're also not. We're looking for quality of uh, outcome. Outcome. No, sorry, yeah, you throw me off. Um, oh, no, go, go again. Go what on, is Cal. it? Get his mic. We want the equality of opportunities. Yes. We don't want the equality of outcomes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I did know that. But, that's but on that fun. note, Coro. There you this go. This episode is sponsored by Coro. We did have quite a lot of these salted, covered almonds left, but Steph has literally annihilated the, quite the a entire lot. I thing. I think that was fun. I'm not even sponsored, but honestly, these are the most incredible salted caramel toffee <laughs> almond balls you will ever experience in your entire life. Yeah. yeah. There it is. What are these ones? I said it. Oh, wow. That's, Co- coffee that and coffee? cinnamon, that one. Oh, coffee and cinnamon. You can also eat them on the podcast, but we always move away from the mic because we've got a one-star review for eating on the mic. Yeah. And we'll never let that down. So whoever left that comment, they know. Also, oh, wow. we, we've got a hazelnut spread. That's mm. a really nice one. Do you for that? Well, oh, sorry. We've just given you two things at once. They're so tasty. Hey, the, the nut butter's from great, isn't it? Yeah. See, I so hazelnut reminds me of Nutella. Mm. Did you just that. drink that? That is, that seems like it's going to be sweeter, like no, a, sip. a bit. Sip. Yeah, why not? Sip of you're the nut butter queen. Oh god, you're making I've... me feel a bit weird. What are you? Yeah, runny, isn't it? Cal, <laughs> I can see Cal's face because I don't usually sit on this side. Cal is just like, what is going on? Fantastic. No, yeah. but you don't. Sorry, but you don't slurp. Hey, it's, it's, a a runny, it's a runny butter, babe. Oh, it's a runny butter. <laughs> but you can you can get a uh, dizzy discount from using the code not so fit five. The link will be in the description of the YouTube uh, and all other places that you're listening. Sorry, just to point out, why have the toxic waste made themselves to the? Uh, because Steph to is going to taste one of those toxic waste in a minute. <laughs> oh. I absolutely used to love sour sweets. So. Yeah, so did we. But they have you had, have you had toxic no. waste before? I have, yeah. but many years ago. As a child, as yeah. children do. Yeah. But first, oh, let's get the monsters open first. Ooh. Explain your reason behind the white monster, because I'm a I'm an avid fan of the black and blue, the OG original. The this goat. is the most elite flavour you will ever come across. And you know, for anyone to tell me otherwise, sorry. I so what's what's the difference? Because people this, know the on the podcast, and, the I'm not. The black and blue a... more so tastes like the, an OG original energy drink. That's a bit more like peasant lemonade. Would I be able to have a little taste? No, I, do, I don't mind that one. It's nice. To That's be fair. an everyday monster. That's uh, the occasional. I don't rate either of them, to be honest. <laughs> they, no, they taste like Red Bull. Okay. Ultra, though. The white over. That's nicer than there the black go. one. That one's actually a very acquired taste. A black and blue monster. Right, you ready? Oh, Carl, wow. Carl's going to have to get some uh, magician sw- style switching on here because um, we're going to do a game. Of try not to laugh. Oh yeah. Dad joke edition. I mean, I, well, Steph's, I'm. Steph's I, gonna be shit at this. I <laughs> listen. I listen <laughs> to the podcast every single week, and I can't say your jokes are very funny. Oh, that like is... that is one thing I will say. Okay. As in Ben's aren't but, funny. But these, mine, are, mine are hilarious. The dad jokes are not supposed to be funny. Okay. Okay. That's the, the funny, but not funny. Understood. Right, are you ready? Quick switch in here, Carl. This is a game between you two. Oh. Head okay. to head, yeah. She's already won because it's on. quite scary. Ready? What do you call a fish with no eyes? Don't know. Fish. Really shit. <laughs> Can we have some tumbleweed noise? Can we just... It also took me quite a long time to realise what you were trying to do. Okay, that's that's right. <laughs> like that's a right. fish. You ready? <laughs> Dad joke number two. Okay. It's nil-nil so far. What is Forrest Gump's password? Don't know. One, Forrest, one. 
I don't get that. Oh my god, this is where Lucy destroys the jokes. Do you get that? Yeah, but it's not that funny. Oh. So regardless, <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me and Carl are sitting here like pissing ourselves. One, one. I actually don't. Can someone go on? So the famous quote is "Run, forest, run." Yeah. One forest, one. Because, like, you know, God. in a password, you would normally typically have like nut. <sighs> No, I like uh, they were all right. Third and third and final one. Oh god, there's a third question. Mm-hmm. Decider. Do you want to ask a friend? I'm joking. Uh, what type of room has no doors? Don't know. A mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy's definitely gone a little bit there. No, because I don't understand the joke. Oh, I was seeing how can you Steph not understand that joke? Because a mush, a mushroom. What's a mush? Is in like finish. mushy. Write me off this one. Is in like mushy what? Mushy, mushy root, mushy doors. I oh. thought of Alice in Wonderland. Then a I was got... fucking mushroom. The things that you cook, eat. Okay, so um, I envisioned a whole. Steph, help me out. Mushroom. <laughs> This is why it's almost ben... funnier watching you not understand the joke because it makes me laugh. You can see is it the cognitive dissonance that goes through Lucy's facial expressions? Well, Ben Ben usually does rude jokes that I don't laugh at because I don't want to. I don't want to exaggerate that sort of behaviour. So of I refuse to laugh at those jokes, even though I do <laughs> sometimes find them really funny, like the ones about like cocks, and I just cannot <laughs> keep it involved. Um, but no, I didn't find them that funny. No, can. Would I be able to hit Steph with a first kind of question? Yeah, I was, I... I was just going to say, on a more serious note, this is a really good podcast following on from the Mo one because oh, yeah. Mo's podcast was all about happiness. I feel like your big energy, big happiness vibes. Hopefully I can provide that. Yeah. You are though. You're one of the happiest yeah. people I know and have ever met. No, but you are. You radiate. You're very charismatic and you radiate happiness. And that's actually, has that always been... You is that is that is that not not your feed of fitness at school? The only award I would ever get is for smiling, being the smiliest person. I was known as um, Little Miss Sunshine. Oh, <laughs> that's so nice. So I can say, yeah, the the happiness has always been that. There. That almost seems like the poo poo award, doesn't it? But as you get older, you realise how much as a significant award that can be in later life because yeah. everyone's looking for happiness at the end of the day yeah i wasn't i wasn't the sporty one but at least i was the happy one so on that and you knew i would ask you this and actually when i put up and asked a question before i think a lot of people need to understand more so your background because even when you first told me the age you got into sport and fitness i was like what what do you mean because that's literally my age now, now. And I don't think you really share this on your socials. I feel like I used to, but now people almost think there's absolutely no way Mm -hmm. that I no longer like push that. Mm. But yeah, I got into fitness a lot later than most people that are into fitness now. And when is that? I was 24. Which which kid were you in, PE? The one... (laughs) That never attended. Really? <laughs> like, never. Like, if if there was one subject at school I hated, PE. Absolutely really? detested it. I would do any subject over it, even maths. Anything. Like. That's so weird, isn't it? And the transition that you've made to what you do now. But were you good? Were you, were you, were you good at sport? Were you good at PE? I was the person. I think my issue was I always thought I was no good so I would do everything to Why? not participate I think potentially like <laughs> sports day like that's my worst nightmare like the idea of sports day coming up I'm thinking okay try and pretend maybe I'm ill something like please hope that there'd be like a fire alarm go off or so- anything that would have like that would stop me from actually participating. So I think it was a combination of me thinking I'm awful, um, not having the confidence to try, and and so I just avoided. I avoided it because I thought I would. I was not good at it. And why did you make the switch? Because I would say 
it is a three wait no so not probably when you first started but where you are now and we'll get on to that is a 360 switch Fully. with what you're doing now but when you were 24 then what did you do what how why did you so I, at the time I was an illustrator designing from home graphic designer <sighs> illustrator you know very arty working for myself and I got a dm out of nowhere at the time I didn't even have the account nutty foodie fitness had never stepped foot in a gym and I got a very random DM from somebody that I went to school with literally years ago asking if I could help them train and it, I was a guy or a girl a female and bear in mind we'd not spoken in years she just went to my school and I was like no 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 you've got this completely wrong I am not that sort of fitness person mm -hmm. like maybe exterior I looked athletic because I've always had that frame but like actually doing exercise I had no idea anyway long story short she convinced me after me telling her I have no idea honestly like no idea um she convinced me to sign up to a gym and help her train obviously me not being a personal trainer like yeah. I would never and and even still now I never show fitness content really because I'm always thinking I'm not qualified to put that content out I would never want to like try and show someone how to do something when I know that there are people qualified to do that sort of thing but anyway long story short got into it as a result of that DM started training maybe like twice a week and then realized you know what I actually really enjoy this and then that was it that was the only gym I had ever trained at so, oh my god one of the things that you touched on there was one of the things i actually really respect you for is i don't think there's anything wrong with putting your fitness stuff or anything else anybody else putting their own fitness up on instagram tiktok or whatever it is because you can you can show your own journey you can doc your document your own stuff because at the end of the day it's your channel if you want to yeah. document and show people what you're doing i think that's great because you can inspire people without coaching people oh yeah but for sure. one of the things that happened very often in the fitness industry, especially like PTs and coaches, is that people get told you should be a PT because you're in shape. And there's that difference between, it's like with a professional driver who's great at race driving doesn't mean they'd make a good driving instructor. Yeah. And that's one of the things I've really respected from you because you would, you're one of those people who could definitely monetize their platform by coaching and the way that you look. Yeah. But you've decided not to do that. And that's one of the things I massively respect because there's so many people who jump on that bandwagon and then end up going down a dead road because they realize they're a shit coach and they don't really enjoy it. Yeah. And you've stuck to what you enjoy and you've done very well with that. Yeah, I would, I feel I, <laughs> just based on aesthetics, I feel like, I could earn quite a lot from making an ebook of how to get abs. abs. However, I'm very aware that for me, it's quite, it's down to genetics. And there is so much room because there are so many people that are so naive. And even me not being qualified, not being that person that, you know, knows the most or is the most, you know, educated, I still can differentiate between what is legit and what is a complete sellout and mm. a cop-out. So I, I'd never want to be that person to Has, be associated. Sorry, there's no reason why you couldn't do your personal training course and then go and do it though. Oh yeah, like for if, sure. If, if you wanted to. 100%. But at the same time, for me, fitness is the thing that I just love doing. It's mm -hmm. never been yeah. goal-orientated as like up until now. One of the questions, and it's basically what you were talking about with the six pack, which is kind of how we became friends, yeah. funnily enough. Yeah. We, I don't even know if you know this, but we had something going on because I was being trolled for having abs and Steph reached out to me and basically said the same thing. And I've just seen a very interesting question, which is on this topic. And it's something we speak about off podcast quite a lot of the time. And it's to do with like metabolism, having abs and the amount of food that you eat hmm. and basically asking, would you still eat anything you want even if you had a normal metabolism and you didn't have abs? So they're saying, would you still eat as much as you do yeah. if you didn't look the way that you do? Okay, well, firstly, there's obviously there's two things to break down there. 
I eat as much as I do because I have a fast metabolism. 100%. So, you know, if I had a slower metabolism, I wouldn't need <laughs> to eat at all hours of the day. Um, I also, I do also get this question asked quite a lot, but it's something that I would struggle to answer honestly because I have never been in that position because even before fitness, I was happy with my body. So I feel like it's hard for me to to comment when it's something I've I've never been in that position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, that may be a cop out of an answer, but I can't tell you honestly how I would feel. Like as long, I feel like as long as I'm happy in my body, like internally, externally, I'm, I, I feel, what's the word? Satisfied, happy, content. Yeah, I feel content, like, I don't know where I'm going with this. I feel I feel like one of the re I've had a couple of questions actually on the story about yeah. that about asking like how much food do you actually eat because I think people doubt the amount that you you eat. I th there's, there's obviously a lot of things that make up metabolic rate and one of the big ones is neat non exercise yeah. activity thermogenesis. Your your step count I believe is is fairly high anyway on yeah. top of like your training. That, but no, but one of the other things that people really don't think about is. One of the other components to you, you like make up metabolic rate and neat is just like the amount that you fidget and move and you fucking move. All, you're very animated. Let me say so, right now. No I'm, joke, that will contribute to your overall energy expenditure. For sure. Like I'm really struggling right now to not move so much because I don't want the audio to mess up. But genuinely, I, I use my hands all the time. Like I can't physically do an Instagram story without not using my mm -hmm. hands. So I do feel like that contributes does, massively. Like I'm for, I'm always bouncing and like, I don't just sit, 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 sit still. Your, your personality is energetic though. Like we said at the start of the podcast, you're very energized and happy and it's a great thing. And people won't always see that because it people see you eating a baguette yeah. for example the baguette picture you put on instagram you look great six pack muscly eating your baguette people i believe anyway and this is the way that i take a lot of things is it reflects onto themselves that she she's probably not actually eaten that baguette mm. because that makes them feel slightly better does it make you angry do these comments, because I know you get a lot of them. I know you get a lot of comments about your body as a woman saying you don't eat a lot of food. Does that does it infuriate you? I feel like at the start, I would really have to try and defend myself. I would have to constantly explain myself. I would have to point out the differences that we all have, like metabolism, the, you know, muscle mass, like all these things contribute, right? And I feel like I used to spend a lot of my energy trying to explain and trying to get people to understand. Whereas now I kind of see it as more of a then problem than a me problem. Mm -hmm. And I, I tend to no longer really respond to it because I feel like it's, it's draining my energy, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so no, I don't let it affect me because I don't spend that time then trying to make them understand you know it's draining yeah it is. and it's the same thing it is over and over again but you've never really let it well from what i've seen and what you've told me you've never let it negatively affect you you as in you dealt with it a lot better than i have yeah i think you, you've not really got upset no about it you don't let it no i feel i feel like it just you know you read it and you think really but then you let it go like that's such a tiny thing like why you know it's it's someone's just left that comment on mm. on my page and they've carried on with their day why should i then spend an hour getting annoyed mm. getting frustrated trying to explain myself i just carry on i think you manifest that though as well we were speaking about this with mo last last week well it was this week actually wasn't it about often if you get really caught up with those comments, you manifest that negative energy and sometimes sure. can yeah. can bring in more of it. And like we mentioned at the start of the podcast, you are genuinely one of the happiest pe people we've, we've known and met and had the pleasure of being friends with. Aww. Serious question. If you were to reflect on it, what do you think your secret to your own happiness is? That's quite a deep question, that. I think it's focusing on the good stuff. So for instance, if 
there's five like great things going in my life and there's one really quite bad thing that I can't control and is you know there's nothing that I can do about it I let that thing be and I focus on all the good and all the other things rather than you know going over the thing that you I maybe I can't control or like you know you post a YouTube video and there's like 90% amazing comments and there's just that one instead of focusing on that one negative think about all the people that are actually there supporting you backing mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. tune in they want you know, they're, they're a fan, they, they support you. Like that's, I think that's where, it's all based on the energy. It's like you said, like the energy you bring, you you attract it more. Mm -hmm. So if you're focusing on the negative, more negative is gonna come to you. So positive vibes. <laughs> that is very true though, you, so we've known each other. I think people think we've known each other forever and it's actually, it's not even that much of a long time. We tried to figure it out, it's maybe like a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, but it, People don't know this, but Lucy Davis oh, Steph, this was... Story. I think I think you embarrassed yourself on this story, Seth. I know what you're about to say. You were my best friend before you even knew it. Sorry. <laughs> the thought, you so manifested she, that shit. She manifested. Yeah. And so you DM me and then we just met up yeah. really randomly when I was in London. But ever since knowing you, because I do have anxiety and you know, and I send yeah. you these long voice notes and you say something and I'm like, you know what? You're so you're so right. I need to stop focusing solely on this one negative yeah. thing that's making me feel like absolute shit yeah. and focus on all the other good things. Even if the good things are just you're going for a walk and having a nice coffee and seeing for your sure. friend, great. It doesn't have to be something extravagant. Like after my ultra, you were like, look, bad, bad things are happening. You feel shit, but you've got all this to look forward to and you do radiate that. And I think it comes through on your social media as well. Your personality your YouTube especially, the way you talk to people. And that was leading on to one of my questions as well. What What is your perception about the whole toxic positivity? So people who are essentially quite fake on social media and they have this social media person bubble. bubble and then when you meet them in real life they're a completely different person how does that make i that's not you by the way that's why i'm using you as an example yeah. how does that make you feel considering you work in this space yeah so i've had i'd say i've had a couple of encounters where i've met someone and they've been completely different to what they are online and i feel kind of disappointment mm. because you know that whole time that you spent following someone you've spent Who? I'm joking, I'll put you <laughs> No, um, it out. That you've spent following and like, you know, liking their posts and, you know, interacting with them and then you meet them and it was such a... Yeah. And um, yeah, I just find it's, it's a little bit disappointing just because you've always thought that they're that kind of person and yeah. then they're someone completely different. Um, but hopefully... I'm the same online as I am offline. That's yeah. that's my goal, just to be myself. Yeah. Don't meet heroes. Well, guys. So, <laughs> she, needs to, just, she needs to stop this because she thought she makes me. <laughs> the thing is with that sometimes though is, and there can be two sides to that coin because you, you'll you see some people like on TikTok or Instagram and if it's really short form content and people are just blasting big energy. Yeah. In comparison to having like a sit down conversation with someone for mm. a while, it, there's going to be a contrast there because people are trying to sell themselves quickly. Yeah. So there sometimes can be like a, a a miss a mismatch. Yeah, no, definitely. But I think you're obviously very big on YouTube. And was YouTube your thing before? No. Instagram was my thing. Okay, that's interesting. Because... Before we go off on this tangent. Okay, no, no, sorry. F fake There's so much to fake, chat about. Fake internet personas. Cal, explain, because um, you pulled this up to me, about the Japanese motorcycle adventurist. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. So we are going This fits with the topic to... that we're talking about. This is interesting. The, um, the Japanese motorcycle listen, adventurist. Give me a sec. So basically, in Japan, there is an influencer. Is this a true story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's been going off. There's okay. an influencer. And I'm going to pull up a picture of her now. Um, and we're all going to have a quick little look. Yeah, at so it. if, Carl, you can post this picture on the yeah. YouTube clip so people can see it as well. Have so a little look. Here Steph. we go, guys. We can all have a look. So on my screen, we can have a look. This is, uh, I forget her name. Um, but yeah, so she's essentially an influencer. She posts pictures with her Yamaha motorbike. Um, and she's been blowing up on socials, big on TikTok, big on Instagram. But it was recently revealed that this person is, in fact, 
this gentleman on yeah. the right using that's, that's, that's face her. filters. She's she using face app, basically. Mm. And um, she was, everyone was loving her. She, she used to post pictures in beautiful locations with this Yamaha. She's like this Japanese female um, bikist or whatever you call her. And she created this fake persona. Yeah. And one day she posted a picture on a TikTok. You speak, I think you're, you're shouting. Sorry. She posted, <laughs> a, she posted, uh, <laughs> posted a picture on TikTok. And you could see in the mar- in the mirror of the motorbike her actual face and she didn't realize and everyone found out basically that it was it was this person That's insane. but the other thing that happened is she he basically came out and said that he f- thought the world would rather see someone who's young and beautiful rather than an old uncle which is what he described himself as however he just carried on using the account posting pictures of himself and posting his own personality and his followers went through the roof when he really Way. started posting his his real reality. Wow. That's I, mean, I didn't even know Facebook tune what you, that's a completely different face. Yeah. That's an issue. That's like catfishing, but social media style. Yeah. But yeah. I kind of feel for the guy that was using the filter to not show his real self. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm also happy that it's still taken off. God, That's that is mad. mind-blowing. It's, it's weird, isn't it? He thought... I suppose it's like... It's, it's the, have you ever heard something called the halo effect? No. The halo effect is basically where people who are beautiful are, on average, more trusted and believed to be more reliable. Yeah. Uh, so people use beauty as like a one of their assets basically yeah. to get things done when it's it's obviously not it doesn't reflect true so he's kind of believed that if i'm beautiful look great more people are gonna th- see me as this pin-up guy or pin-up girl but then when he's shown his true real- reality and personality people have people have loved him or her i think that's quite sad sometimes and i think it was great the opposing the flip side that when he actually showed his true personality that more people warmed to yeah. him I mean, that could have gone both ways. Like, people could have been quite, you know, Stop. shocked yeah, at the I'm fact sure that he's... Was. Yeah, because it is catfishing. But then... Well... I'm sure, I'm sure probably, sorry to be crude, so I'm, I'm sure probably some of the guys were probably pissed off because there some being some guys at home whacking off to those <laughs> images of her sitting on the motorbike and then realised that they're old uncle. Yeah. <laughs> but the, I, I do think this is one of the things with social media and where they bought in the filters and the massive array of filters they bought in, the filler, the lips. You've never really used them. I went through a small stick. No, I'm no, I'm talking S- Steffi on my story, I still had a head the size of a no, fucking no, no. Okay, so that's not a <laughs> that's not a like a fil- you know the ones I'm talking about. The, the where they make you look. You you look at yourself and it's like, oh my God, like I look incredible look at my teeth look mm. at my face my yeah. lips i went through a small period when i was just really insecure and i'd use them quite a lot of the time and it would make me feel better i have noticed ever since following you and knowing you you've never really used those filters no not really and you don't i just i just really wanted to touch on that because you've there's a lot of people who do use them which is fine but i stopped using them because it was it wasn't helping the way yeah. i felt about myself I think because I so often, you know, on a YouTube video, I'll maybe vlog when I've just woken up, like literally the other day, I woke up and filmed two minutes after waking up, my voice was croaky, no makeup, none of that. I think when you're so used to like having your face all done up and then you maybe go a day where you don't have that, then maybe the filters come into play. But if your normal is just well, I've now got makeup on, but, you know, if your normal is just your bare face, Mm. then there's no real reason to use a filter. Mm -hmm. I occasionally put Paris on, you know, the one that smooths you, because I'm very um, low maintenance with, like, I've got a moustache right now, guys. I don't know how good the camera quality is. How good is it? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know how good the quality is, but, you know, sometimes, moustache. Do you wax it? No, I pluck it. I, I, I have, it was, I think it was literally Cal who said to me and I was fucking more tired in Lanzarote. You know where there's like sun? Cal, how do you not remember this? And you were like, you got a little... And I was like, yeah, Cal, it's really the sun. really say that? Yeah. I was like, it's oh, the sunshine. God, to be fair, Cal said to me wisely, she looked like Hitler today. <laughs> <I don't> know, <laughs> but I do because, and again, kind of 
common conversation we talk about and it's good that we discuss it on a podcast because there'll be girls listening going, yeah. fucking hell, I, always, I pluck my moustache too. Growing because- up, hair, facial hair, biggest insecurity. Like, forget body. I was concerned about the hair on my face. What hair? I'm quite a hairy person. And I realised <laughs> that talking about it made me feel better because then no one can suddenly clock oh she's got a moustache because i said it already mm. so you know i feel like that's yeah what you're doing basically is you are eminem of the the facial hair world aren't you do you know what he does in rap battle in the rap battle in the air eight mile he disses himself first so nobody so no one else can do can. it yeah. there you go boom yeah. but there you go ah. yeah there you go carl go on finish it off <laughs> <laughs> but i i think obviously like spanish people have more hair um and indians and i've got both yeah and yeah that's why i i'm very hairy as well because i have spanish blood so i've got scottish on, in me all right guys on on that note on i was similar so in secondary school i had quite hairy legs um even when i was like in year seven i've got jeans on now stuff um, gets me to shave them for him. No, he doesn't. Shave I, that, so I shaved them for the first time in year seven. I remember my dad coming in. I'm like, "What the hell are you doing?" And I actually started crying because there's like two kids who like call me hairy legs and stuff in school. Oh. And that's because I had that Spanish jeans. I was naturally quite hairy. Yeah. But now I don't have a lot on me because I think ever since then I honestly shaved, shaved my legs, carried on shaving since then. But I... now, but now I do it because it makes me look leaner instantly. It's like one of the biggest kept secrets by women. I mean. Don't I grew up as a swimmer? All the guys shaved. The guys shaved their arms, the legs. So I grew up with hairless people, and I will. Or I, I, I prefer shaving my armpits because I know some people obviously don't. They don't shave. I just prefer. I feel quite nice being shaved. But I think because I grew up as a swimmer, we all we, we shaved everything because you're in a very everything. tight e- every you're g- talking quite young learning yeah. to shave down there more terrifying how to understand yeah, with the yeah. razor down near there and i kind of wish i wasn't so obsessed with it at, at a young age as in i was wholly concerned i'd started getting waxes really young down there because i was so embarrassed and as you said i started speaking about it more as like, oh, i've not shaved my legs Oh, my legs, my leg hair's really long. Before somebody else mm. could make the point about it. Same with small boobs. First thing I probably did on social media, don't make the comment that I've got small yeah. tits. I will we tell know, you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have grown up with an A cup since ne- always. Yeah. And I think that's a really strong message that you've shared there without even realizing. Because it is, it's very powerful, isn't it? If you already say you know what, I'm not even that insecure about it, but I'm just going to point out the fact that like, I've got small tits. Yeah. So don't make don't make the comment to me. But what I was talking about before going on to this was the fact that you did Instagram first. Yes. And you moved over to YouTube, which is obviously longer form content. You're very chatty in it. Were you ever, I know think I think people have asked you this as well, because your YouTube grew very quick and you yeah. got a lot of views very quickly. How was that kind of transition and your first video and just knowing what you, Naughty Foodie Fitness, Mm. wanted to even do on YouTube? Like, how did you know what you even wanted to talk about? So my intention was never to have a YouTube channel. Ah. It was because, I'll tell you this, I reached 10,000 followers on Instagram and every single person said, you need to do the 10,000 calorie challenge Mm. because you've hit 10K. Was and that, that was the video? that was the only reason I made YouTube <gasps> the, to to film that video. I didn't know that. It was the only so reason. So is that your first video on your channel? It's my third because I did a like get to know me Q&A thing mm. and then I and then it was a vlog and then it was the 10k. But I never I didn't I I feel like I never had that sort of right today I'm going to become a YouTuber. It yeah. was more make a channel because I want to eat some food and that will be that. I didn't think that I would carry on making YouTube videos. I had no intention. But then I realized, you know, I talk quite a bit and doing Instagram stories for 15 seconds just wasn't cutting it. It Kept getting cut off and I thought, I need a platform where I can actually talk. And so then I realized, yeah, YouTube's my thing. So you enjoyed YouTube from the start? 
Yeah. You you knew straight away it was your thing. Because I think some people start and then realize, oh, fucking hell, it's not. I mean, when I first started, there was like a video every three months. It wasn't a, a consistent thing. It was just very, oh, okay. Like maybe I've been invited to a restaurant and I can try out different food. And I was like, oh, I'll bring the camera along. Maybe people will be interested. So it never really started as a channel to show t- for it to be a foodie channel. Never had that intention. But when I started putting out these videos, when I was, you know, offered try this out or a restaurant taste testing, I realized that people really enjoyed the fact that I just enjoyed food. And Mm -hmm. it was kind of like, it was bizarre to me because I was like, what do you mean? I'm I'm just eating food. I'm just living my life how I've always done it. Why is this such a like new thing? And that's when I started to realize that like food and fitness don't mix as much as I thought like you know where you're just getting into fitness you don't I don't know how to explain this like I've just always thought people train you enjoy training people eat you enjoy eating I never realized that people that are super into fitness like the food is also quite a big deal like whether like health and Mm -hmm. And so because I was coming into it just like enjoying this, I then realized, oh, okay, maybe like I am a bit of a, not an anomaly, but do, do you that see what I'm trying to get to? That is an anomaly to? though, because people, I think anyway, a lot of people get into fitness to be healthier and things like that, but it might be coming from a place of, oh, I eat too much or I eat too little. And then they find fitness. Do you so, agree? So that again. So Steph's kind of saying she loves eating food, she likes fitness, and it was never, they just kind of gelled together. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think a lot of people start a fitness journey because of some sort of relationship that they have with food. I don't think so. Do you not think? I don't think everyone gets into fitness because they're not everyone. I don't think it's I don't think it's even a common thing. I think like a lot of people may talk about that and that's where maybe why you see more of it. Um I believe like most people will get into gen pop fitness because of self-confidence i actually agree with lucy i mm. feel like there's there's a stronger correlation than you think between food food and, and fitness. fitness the what i mean is that i don't think people get into fit- fitness generally because they've got a poor relationship with food well it's not it's a lot of people will start a fitness journey to lose weight yeah or what is the to reason why, muscle. But what, is, what i'm saying is what is the reason that they want to lose weight oh no no i get that yeah, so you're on like the second strand, but we're saying when you initially go, I think a lot of people think in their heads they don't have the best relationship with food and they think fitness will help that goal. And then, yeah, I agree with you. It'll stem from self-confidence or how they feel about themselves. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Are you not? Yeah. What do you think, Cal? I think it's it's definitely something that people will talk about more. So like it's an if people get into fitness for a variety of reasons, like a hundred different reasons, but I think food is quite an easy one that people can relate to. I don't know. I think it's probably... I, 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 this is just my... I could be wrong. I probably believe that more people will have poor relationships with food after they get into fitness because of following the wrong people and following the wrong paths than getting into fitness because they have disorderly eating. I don't think telling people to get into a regime or a program or a diet is potentially a good thing if you've got disorderly eating you should probably be looking elsewhere either therapy or or taking a step away from strict regimes and programs because creating more structure and barriers to entry around an already disordered eating pattern i don't think is going to be helpful to people i mean people may get into it for that reason but i'm so what i'm saying is don't do that because it's going to end up worse off not we're not talking about disordered eating though you just have poor relationships with food yeah so just as in i eat too much or i don't eat enough was that what you were thinking? Whereas people yeah. start thinking about, oh, I don't eat enough. I'm going to start lifting, so I'm going to eat more. Yeah. I eat too much. Oh, maybe I need to lose a bit of weight. I see, I wasn't, I see where I, you're yeah. both coming from. Yeah, no, and I, I, do. I think they're both linked as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think yours is quite an unusual where you didn't even cross reference anything. Yours wasn't self confidence. You were happy with your body before. Yours is purely enjoyment. Yeah. You started something and were like, this is great. Yeah. It was genuinely like, never to look a certain way to lift a certain weight it was just 
this is actually really good fun. So let me continue doing it. And so that's why I sometimes find it hard, you know, when someone says like, explain your journey. I I was just least sportiest person Mm -hmm. you'd ever come across to gym's actually really quite fun. Okay, Nighty Foodie Fitness was born. (laughs) But what you're doing is very impressive. I think that's a journey. You're, You're sat here going, oh, you know, I got into fitness at 24. I, w- I wasn't the sporty kid. Um, What are you doing next year? Okay. My intention is to no, do No, no, what Iron are Man. you doing next year? <laughs> no, I am going to smash an Ironman next year. So you're saying at 24, you got into fitness, you hated sport, you hated sports day, and then you've just come out with the statement that I'm doing an Ironman next year. <laughs> I've got some making up to do. <laughs> But All that those missed journey. PE lessons. <laughs> you make you doing it. it in the whole next I th- year. I think your attitude towards health and fitness though will is what will help you during this journey. I think that sometimes because you're not like obviously you're gonna have to be structured now with the program and that you're yeah. doing, but you're not like super OCD with it. You're not. You don't beat yourself up about things. I think that lends itself quite well to what what you're doing because I think that attitude sometimes can be super helpful. Not for everyone. It's yeah. very de- dependent on the individual and the character. But I think for you, it's massively helpful not for you to be... Read that question. That is exactly... Okay, yeah. Someone's asked, I know she has a chilled approach, but does she want to dig deeper and see her full potential? I, I don't think because you... Because... I mean, I'm speaking for you. I can't speak for you. This is perception. Yeah. I don't think that because you put on a chilled approach doesn't mean that you don't dig into the pain cave and get shit done. I yeah. think that because you've got a friendly approach to things. I'm, I'm sure there's a sports star I can think who's very similar, who's like an animal. But like Courtney also... DeWalter. De oh, yeah, Courtney Walter. Oh, Perfect example. Perfect. She, she is a fucking animal. Yeah. But also animal. super bubbly, super happy all the time. Has always got a good attitude about things. Yeah. And and I think people can sometimes misperceive potentially your ability. I I think that I'm consistent and motivated as a result of being chilled. Let me explain. Yeah. Because I don't have the structure, I'm super eager to train when I train. And so when I train, I give it everything. But if someone said to me, okay, tomorrow do legs, and I don't fancy doing legs, I'm not gonna be as, okay, let's do this, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah, again, I am I love it, but I give it my everything. Like I don't like to do things and not put everything into it, which is why I decided to do this Ironman because ever since I started training at the age of 24, I have never had a single goal, I, nothing. Physical strength, not a single goal. And so I want to do something where I can actually put everything into it and see like how far I can go, like what my potential is. Because I I do believe I have potential Mm -hmm. and this is like a perfect way for me to actually train and see like how good can I become. Can I ask, if you've never had a goal in like the past five or six years, what kept you going? Enjoyment. Purely enjoyment. But if you look at those two people, like the two different paths that you can take, being process orientated and goal orientated, you massively in your character and personality lend itself to being process orientated, which is why you'll do well from following that path. I hope so. But that's so interesting, just openly saying, because I'm I'm definitely I have a I've had many a goals over the past like five, six, ten years, and I really am hard on myself when I don't hit a goal or I don't achieve something. Yeah. And I, I put so much pressure on myself to do well, not just finish the 100K, to do well. Like the last couple of months I was saying, I'm, I'm going to be top 20. And you were like, calm, Lucy, calm yeah. the fuck down because you're hating your training. Yeah. And I do learn a lot from you in that aspect because I really struggle not to put the pressure on myself. Do you think you will feel pressure near the Ironman? Absolutely. Because... This whole time up until this point, I've winged it. Like I've winged every YouTube challenge I've done. <laughs> I've literally winged it. I've thought, let me try run a marathon. Oh, I accidentally run that marathon, but that's because I didn't have the pressure. That's yeah. why I, I excel because I don't have the 
you are going to do this today. I don't have someone cheering me on because I haven't entered a race. I've run it around where I live. However, an Ironman is a bloody big goal. And so I think now that I'm actually going to start training towards it, massive pressure because I can't, I don't have the fallback of, well, at least I tried. I'm I'm training to, to do well at this. So I think that the pressure will will build but I also am excited for that because I've never had that before. Yeah. I, th- I think if you ask anyone who's been successful in anything in life, though, most of the time they'll say, I, I winged it. I think yeah. everyone everyone on earth is fucking just winging it. We can only do so much training. We can only do so much structure. We can only read so much and have so much knowledge. At the end of the day, we're still winging it. I think a lot of people will take a lot from that and even a lot from your approach to know that you don't always have to be balls to the wall, like eyes on the prize because there's a lot that you can take from the process just a quick interlude from that can we just do this for g we're the three best friends that anyone, anyone could have. have we're the three <laughs> best friends that, that anyone could have. have we're the three best friends that anyone could have because he'll be listening to us in the car at some point i know will you love that oh my there. god we should have called grant well i was gonna ask Grant is, I know a lot of people know who Grant is because he features on a lot of your YouTube videos. Yeah. He's going to be more famous than I am. How, <laughs> how, how did you and Grant meet? <laughs> really weird one. So we, it, we, we spoke weird. years, years back. Years. I'm talking 2016. He slid into the DM, you know. Obviously. I was wearing a bright red dress. Did, it, did, I, he, I, did I he really? Because I joke about this all the time with, with Lucy. Oh, he fully. He, he yeah, you didn't through. slide into let's, the DMs. Let's ring Grant and see if he answers and see if he can confirm that Do fact. you think Grant will answer? I mean, he's at a stag. Yeah, I know he messaged me earlier saying he was at a stag. This, if did he answers, this will, this, this will be great. You should have FaceTimed him. I know. Him. <gasps> he's paintballing now. He's oh, paintballing. Oh, so he might answer. He's going to feel it vibrating in his pocket and know exactly yeah. what it's for. Come on, Grant. Don't Come let on, the Grant. fellowship down. He could have been on the podcast without even knowing it. I'll leave him a voice note and see if he gets back. He's not going to get back to you. Nah, he's he's nah. mid. Mid session. Yeah. Hello, Grant. Basically, your lovely other half is claiming that you slid into the DMs and were very <laughs> persistent and consistent with your approach. We're live on the podcast and we just wanted to ask you, can you confirm or deny? Love okay. that. That was was that a voicemail? Voice note, yeah. Or, oh, a voice note. A voice note. Yeah, we'll wait for but his I'll response. let you continue. Yeah, it was really, really random. Slid into the DM, 2016. We spoke for a bit, never met up. Years later, lockdown came around, went for a walk. And he recognized me just from my bum (laughs) and my legs. And he sent me a message out of nowhere saying, I think I've just driven past you. I was like, what do you mean? Crap. No way. (laughs) Because I I literally, like, I thought we lived miles away from each other which mm. we which we do he like the the chance of him being in my area very very slim yeah and um he he messaged back saying no like this is the this is the direction i had a look i just said direction direction in spanish it's that's how you say address um and yeah it turned out he had driven past me and then later that day i gave him a call and we hadn't spoken for like four years and we had about a two hour conversation that day on the phone. It was as if like we'd known each other forever. Then we met up and the rest is history. Yeah. We how, love Grant. How, yeah, we do love Big G. How long have you guys been together for now? It's been like two years and maybe four months, something like that. And you guys have just moved in? Yeah. Big test. I feel like I was kind of basically there anyway. I was yeah. pretty much living at his anyway. So it's yeah. not a massive step. It feels, it feels well, it's great to just not be constantly living out of a suitcase. From, from your opinion then with you and Grant, what do you think makes a successful relationship? Having polar opposites. <laughs> He's the chill. I'm the not so chill. <laughs> but you know chill. not, not so in a chill. not in a not in a organized sort of person because i'm not organized but maybe maybe the well i'm not going to call him an unenergetic person but i feel i'm quite energetic and then he's more relaxed and i feel like the two we kind of zen like we yeah. complement each other um but then also he's got the super organized traits and then i'm the quite messy um 
Ben is, so, ben is messy. We're, we're in like all relationships, you were like Grant and I'm more like Steffi with you. <laughs> yeah. You were like super organized on shit like all the time. Yeah. It's me. We're, we're also the snackers. Yeah. And me, me, oh and, me God, and Steffi last night. Yes, just in the peanut honestly, butters and the almonds. Like I, I had a big bowl of granola, Biscoff, loved it, finished my granola bowl. You two, honestly, I think for like two hours, you were literally yeah. in and out the cupboard. The That's snack just... life chose us. Yeah, but I just get a bowl of food. Nah, no, nah, because you, you need in. to keep dip it. Yeah. Getting all those gems everywhere. Yeah, get the, the yeah. Biscoff, peanut butter. No. How much peanut butter do you think you go for? Too much. It's, it's embarrassing. Like, it's, it's genuinely embarrassing. So Grant and I discuss this all the time because people will say, oh, she definitely exaggerates how much peanut butter I have. I go out of my way to not share how much peanut butter I eat because it is genuinely concerning. Grant will be like, Steph, come on, enough now. How, mu- how much is this? I, I eat peanut butter it. like it's yogurt. I Honestly. <laughs> per day. Like you probably yogurt. go through half a tub. I mean, the thing is, I have several open at the same time. And I, what I like to do is I like to go super salty. Then I like to go for a more sweet, you know, like a skippy. Then I like a bit of crunch and a whole row. So I like to, there's different categories and I like to mix and match. And then I'll open yeah. the raspberry jam and then it's a I'm whole. Ve- I'm very similar. I get, sometimes I get though, I can only imagine the insides of us and our intestines and bowels and stuff. And just 80% that sludge going PB. Through. Like when you look at those plumbing adverts and people have to send stuff through to try and get the sludge down the intestine. I think you'd... Would you be happy if when you die, someone cremated you and put you inside a little peanut butter? I'd love that. Yeah, that's you. You want to be in a peanut butter jar. (laughs) Yeah. Speaking of that though, how would... how Not not how would everyone like to die? When you die, how would you like to be... You're asking this question because I said something last week and now you're going to embarrass me. I can't remember. I would like to be in a science museum... (laughs) Sorry. <laughs> like I would like my like to, to for, so for example, I want to be an organ donor just maybe not my eyes. So if I've got healthy lungs when I die at like over 100, which is the aim. I want to die over 100, be a centurion and get a card from the queen. King. Oh. Oh, that we haven't spoke about the queen. Yeah, we have to Sorry. Oh, that's really sad. Yeah, so oh, a card from... You quickly switch back from that, you clearly give a <laughs> no, shit. No, 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 it is... I was just trying... No, I was thinking in my head when this episode goes Go live, um, which will actually just be after the Queen's funeral. Yeah. Oh, I which the is Queen. really sad. But, oh, you've lost my trail of thought I, I thought you meant at first, like your head just being mounted somewhere in a science museum. That's all no, no, I can no. picture is your head. No. Just floating. Yeah. No, no, it's not a floating <laughs> head. It's... So I'd like to be an organ donor if people can have my lungs or whatever and for whatever so say for example my kidney would be in like a glass box at a museum and people would study it or they'd have lucy davis's lungs next to a smoker's lungs and you'd compare my really fantastic lungs you know that kind of vibe and then i'd like to be cremated and sprinkled in cornwall wow how many things do you want well you got to do something with my skin you're being selfish though. No, but no, I'm donating to science. Selfish dead person. Donating to science museum for the comparison of someone with who smokes and then someone who doesn't. Is that as... if you die really young though? Like you're hundred years old, you're Cal, you're I'm gonna have good lungs at hundred years old. Do you think? Yeah, Cal, I will. Do you think you could donate your lungs at a hundred? I don't know who would want them. Yeah. <laughs> someone might use them as a care a fan. But yeah. or maybe I could be you could compare Lucy Davis is an old woman compared to another person as an old woman who smoked. Okay. Okay, so that's that's my what I would like. And then but, be But cremated. why do you want that? Is it to So to, to live on? To live on. To live on. I don't I'm not a religious human. I like to think there's something after. Mm. It just makes me feel quite nice and happy inside. As in like people look down on me or Hopefully no one looks off of me because I don't I don't think that. But you know, just something after. So that's my yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't think about it often because it, no, I, I can't really get my head around it. But that is me. I'm going PB tub. Definitely PB tub. Straight up. You're you're going to get cremated. Abs- so you want to be cremated. <laughs> Absolutely. And you want to be put in a peanut butter jar. PB. That's me. quite strange. And you're just gonna be put on like the mantle. Do you want to be sprinkled? <laughs> Do you know, I've never really thought about Neither these things. And, and to me, 
I mean, I feel like, you know, you've just said this whole lovely thing of you, you'd <laughs> wish that there was, you know, an afterlife and something. I'm just kind of like, I'm living now. Whatever happens, happens. Like, cool. I yeah. want to be buried. Do you? Yeah. Mm. I want someone to have to go through the pain and the arse of digging a hole and be like, for fuck's sake. I, I'll be, I'll be digging. I be buried I'm, I'm, dig a I'll six be foot digging. hole. And then also I want, I want people to have to go and visit my grave. Like, I do like that yeah, idea though. Like again, go and get some steps in, go and be able to sit with the, the, the grave, put yeah, stuff on there. Nice. Still be giving, like I'm, I'm a, one of those people, my love language is gift receiving. So people can still give me gifts when I'm dead. Put on the grave. You are, you do like a gift. Mm. I'll be, I'll be a hundred, hundred, hundred. Maybe my mum once lived to one hundred eleven, and I said, "Deb's, that is a stretch. Yeah. You're going for it there." I mean, I do believe she could. Oh, oh yeah. Can, can I show you guys something here? So, oh my god, yeah. There is a startup uh, coming out of, I think it's somewhere in Europe, uh, and they propose that when you die, you get put into a very big seed, like a pod, wow, and then from that they grow a very big tree. That's already a thing in the UK, Carl, Carl I think. Okay. How, how, how do you grow from the tree? No, no, so it's basically your, your No, no, your body's put in. Oh, no. Whole, okay, that is different. Wow. And then you... <gasps> oh, my God. You know what that looks like? Do you ever get those aliens when you were a kid yeah, and they were in the and gel? Yeah, them in the microwave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they used to, like, make yeah. more? Yeah. You could, so you, you and could and people used to say you could make them and have that babies. That is incredible. I just think that's great because then, like, your family could have a big oak tree and then you could always, like, every year you have a family picnic under Cal. Okay, where, so where, can whoa, I... whoa, whoa, whoa! Where would you have the family picnic? I wouldn't have a dead person buried in my back garden. That's like real kind of fucking oh, no, Jeffrey Dahmer vibes. Yeah, eventually, it turns you could do it in a forest. A tree. I'm yeah, editing my answer, by the way. I want, I want the tree. No, but, I'd like right. the tree. So when you're trying to sell your house, there's dead person in your garden. Yeah, How do you explain that? No, you well, could what? do it in a forest. You couldn't just go and do it in the local park, could you? I think nobody... there must be a place Cal, where people get Cal, them nobody would know. <laughs> You just plant, but actually, one of so we know, I won't no, say what, what, who, when the but people someone, at the thing and everyone's crying around the tree, people are going to be suspicious. Well, s- someone I know sprinkled their parents' ashes into a little sprout, and now it's a big bay tree. But you can move it around, so I think that's lovely. The way you described that, then I thought you were going to say they sprinkled it like on the fish and chips. No, no, no. Is in it's in the soil, and then the trees grown because that's obviously really advanced. To Did put- you guys hear what happened to Tupac when he died? No. So Tupac was cremated, um, and then his ashes were put into a joint, and all of his homies smoked it. <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, apparently there was a there was a joint passed around, like half wow. of it was weed, half of it was Tupac's ashes. Oh my goodness! <gasps> yeah, interesting. Well, that escalated. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've shocked me. That I didn't even. <sighs> that's mad. That's that's weird, isn't it? Well, you've really just thrown. I've never even. So when when he literally say like blow me, that's what they're literally doing. Wow. I mean, I'll, I, that's what, what do you, you think? Want. Do you think anything happens when you're dead? We just had this convo. No, we didn't. Steph didn't give her opinion. Oh, what Steph she thinks. didn't have an answer. <laughs> yeah, so I've never really thought about it, and I I feel like I'm not giving you know that hope to to the listeners maybe, but they can hang hang on to what you said. When no. you're dead, you're dead. Done. My theory is. This is a weird one. Is that we continue to live over and over and over again the same life? So, like when we're all dead, the air just happens exactly the same again, again, and that's why we have deja vu. Deja vu. Do you think? Do you that's never get theory. deja vu? When I get it like, all the time, Whoa. and I'm like, why? Do, like we've had why? this conversation eight, nine, ten, hundred times already. I should have been more prepared then. Yeah. I, yeah. Should, I should know what we the should, questions are. We should have told you the topic was about, did you want to be a tree cremated and <laughs> yeah. leaving deja vu? You want to smoke Tupac? Like, yeah. yeah. I actually did have a more of a serious question, just pivoting back off the back of that. It's not my question, but I think it's a good question because mm-hmm. we speak about this quite a lot. Is it easier to have friends in the same industry because they understand you more? 100%. I feel like, you know, things that I do now, my close friends don't even know about. Yeah. They didn't know about your Iron Man. A a couple do, but it's not something that I've gone out of my way to share with them. Just because I feel they wouldn't share the same sort of maybe excitement that you would share for Mm -hmm. me because you understand, you know, what would go into that. Mm Mm-hmm. 
So I do feel like it's it's really nice having friends that are in the industry, but also having ones that have nothing to do with it because, you know, you completely switch off. There's no chat about what's going on, engagement, all of this. Yeah, um, absolutely. But it definitely helps having, you know, besties like you guys. I, th- I think as well, though, working on social media is a very quite it's quite a weird space it's quite a strange thing yeah and like you said I probably wouldn't talk to my other friends about it because they wouldn't really get it and I don't want to bore them or I don't want them to think but you've got a good life like what what you talk because it's not that no so I don't want to be it's not burdening that do you know what I kind of oh I fully understand because we have conversations that I would never have with other people because I don't want them to think I'm an absolute weirdo because I talk about these sort of things that we do or the conversations we had. I was like shitting myself on the ultra, like running, like yeah. running and shitting. I just would not have those conversations with people who don't Get do it. that because I'd be like, they're not, they're not going to actually take that seriously because I'm seriously concerned about my stomach issues. I mean, it's funny now. Do you not think that's almost like, uh, what's that term called, Carl? Self, them... Self-deprecation. Yeah. In what sense? That you think you don't feel like people will val- value what you're saying. I I massively find what you're saying interesting. What well, you're my fiance. I no, feel like no, you but find anyway, everything I like, say like what you, what you do in general will be very interesting to a lot of people. Yeah. No, I do. Yeah, I get. Maybe I get a bit embarrassed to talk to them. I didn't talk to that many close friends, except like you and Loz about my 100k as in i didn't speak to anyone about my training except as to be fair loz isn't in fitness yeah but what, what i also mean is like if you have a lot of friends who all do similar things they all work nine to five they all do the, the job go home whatever what you do is vastly different so do you not think they'd want to hear that kind of thing i know that sometimes speaking about yourself is hard and difficult maybe i don't know i feel like in my head like oh god i don't know if they're gonna get what i'm trying to say or i'm having an emotional breakdown over a 30k run i would speak to staff i think it's also because from the outside it looks like social like having social media as your job is fantastic you're working for yourself you work your own hours you do the most exciting things i feel like potentially what's happening is you feel like you can't open up when you maybe you're having you know you're feeling anxious about something you feel like you can't open up to someone that's not in social media because they'd they'd think oh hold on a minute your life is amazing they don't understand the ins and outs and the things that goes go on behind the scenes Mm -hmm. so you're better off explaining that to me I mean I I found it quite do you remember I told you when I said to one of my friends, oh, I plan to do an Ironman. And for me, that was a big deal, which is weird. It boggles my mind that for me, it's a big deal to share it's such a, a big thing deal. with a close friend, someone that I've known my whole life. We literally went to nursery together and it was a big deal for me to share that just because I feel like it's a big deal for me. And say they weren't to share the sort of excitement as as me, I'd feel maybe a little bit discouraged. I'd be like, this is a big deal for me. Like, be it, happy. It, yeah. If, be if, happy you, if you tell them that though and they still don't have that reaction, we've had this conversation about friends before. I think you've got to question the, the type of friend that they are because the, the friends and the, the people you surround yourself with should be the people that get behind you, really support you, bring you up, gas you up and want the best for you even if sometimes that's a difficult thing to do. Mm. I agree, but... Being completely honest, I don't feel I get the same from my non-industry friends compared to the ones that do similar things to me, which is sad. I I can understand that to a certain degree because they may not be able to empathize because they don't have the same mindset. Someone's just asked a very similar question as well. Um, Oh God, I've forgotten my password now. My face ID isn't working either. There it is. Is it okay to cut toxic family members out of your life so like similar to the friend question it's about unsupportive family and sometimes they can be the biggest ones in do you know in your way i feel like it's okay but i think maybe what isn't okay is cutting someone out because potentially you haven't seen where they're coming from most of the time i feel like 
it's coming from a good place. Mm -hmm. Like say someone's maybe criticizing what you're doing, they they're concerned. Yeah. You know? And I think that they're if if you've discussed it and you see their point of view and you've shared your point of view and you're still clashing over that, I think cut them out. Well, I mean it's you know, friends it's harder when it's family compared mm -hmm. to when it's friends. But at the same time, if you've, you know, you're both grown adults and you've shared your points of view and there's just, you're gaining nothing from the relationship, even though you're, they're your family, then, you yeah. know, maybe, maybe it's best to just part ways rather than having that negative energy. Yeah. Sometimes you can't choose your family. Yeah. And it, even if you've had that conversation of this is my point of view, this is my point of view and obviously intention's a massive thing and if their intention is only the one the best for you then you can understand where they're coming from but we get to that point where you're living every day with that person and they're just slowly slowly grinding you down mm. over something that you're really passionate about then i think there's got to be a point where you throw in the towel and even if you've got to remove that person temporarily yeah doesn't mean it has to be forever just where you do your thing and where you get this thing done i think that's probably important no, it doesn't have to be a permanent cut off. You sever all ties. There might be a point in your life where you need to do something for you and be selfish yeah. with your endeavor. Yeah. Well, it's the same with, I think that's the same with friends and family. It's obviously hard with fam family though, because people believe it's like blood's thicker than water. It's a really difficult thing to do when you've grown up with someone for many years of your life. Yeah, I, I can't say personal experience with that with family. I've definitely had it with a lot of friends. There's a lot of friends who... I knew in high school who come back now five or six years later. Oh my God, I'm so proud of you. Am I coming to your wedding? What? Like that to me makes me feel really sad. Like I just don't, I can't get on board with stuff like that. It just makes me feel really, just really, I don't know what the word is. Quite embarrassed that I, I you, I'm like, you weren't very nice to me. Mm. Like, was I a loser? Like, did you just not like me then? Do you think those people then come back to you because they see sort of some gain? Oh, they've always asked me for something. Yeah. Or it's always, hey, how are you? I'll miss you so much. Couple of conversation and then they ask me something. I'm not stupid. Mm. I know exactly what you're doing. I've not spoken to you in five years. Yeah. It's quite a long time. I've not seen you in about seven. Yeah. I don't really understand. Maybe if, I've, but I've had friends who I was really close to in high school who were lovely, who've kept up occasionally mash them if they ask me for something i drop everything for them mm. when it's random people who didn't used to be that nice that's when it's a little bit difficult i think do you think as a result your barriers have gone up oh barriers about the barriers the, ba the barriers are on the roof we're gonna get over them it's true hurdles <laughs> the hurdles literally we've had this one before quite another question from a listener what what is the bit you can have some time to think about this what is the biggest lie you've ever told well she's not gonna share it is she i'm sure we had this question once on the podcast and we discussed it all like... we couldn't remember our biggest lies i know wasn't mine really ridiculous mm. i can't remember what mine was but mine was ridiculous do you know that there is one i could fully expose myself here are you, gonna oh, are you, you about to it. get cancelled <laughs> no because i already worked with, with that brand oh okay Shall I expose? Well, yeah, expose. Okay, so I... Exclusive I've, and Steffi. Okay. Wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, in my defense, it was out of my control. I had to do what I had to do, right? Okay. We all tell lies. I've told lies. Yeah, but this one's really bad because I've... I on social media, on social media, I can genuinely say this is the one and only lie I've told. So, I had to do a post to promote... Lamb. 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 As in lamb. lamb. Yep. Yeah. Not a specific brand, just promote eating more lamb. Yeah. Went to the supermarket. There was no lamb. I used mince beef. <laughs> and I that made was the, the most, burger. That was such an anticlimactic yeah. story. That's death. <laughs> That was not a lie. <laughs> but did I, was I expressive in my storytelling? You were, there you uh, go. Were. <laughs> I was honestly waiting. When you said lamb, I was thinking, oh my gosh, she's, she's killed a lamb. She's, she's, I got beef, not lamb. Sorry, you thought Steph went out into a field and just choked out no, a lamb. No, I was just thinking in my head, the way Steph was describing this, she was like, I did this. 
I yeah, went but that's to the quite, supermarket. Given that's the Good brief. Storytelling. Sorry, but given that's the brief, that's quite a big. So basically, you at mince into the lamb. That's your biggest life lie. I just undercooked the beef yeah. to make it look more like lamb, and then I took was, the photo of the burger. Who was this for, Steph? So it wasn't for it wasn't for a brand of lamb. Oh. It was it was to promote Try Lamb, which was a very okay. weird brief as it is because it's not a brand. It's really weird. It's just to promote eating more lamb. But I've realised that the reason that there is this company trying to promote eating of more lamb is because you can't even find lamb in the supermarket. So of course beef is eaten more regularly. Yeah, to be fair, I would never be like, oh, do you want lamb for dinner? No, but you can't, even if you wanted it, you can't pick it up in the supermarket. I went to two before I lied. You can okay. buy lamb in a supermarket. Yeah, but I went to two different supermarkets. Brief was that day. Oh, had a window. Oh. Had to do what I had to do. I'm so sorry, okay? To my followers, I I am sorry. I put my hands up. That is the one and only lie I have to hold on social media. Was this after Brexit? But Just out of interest. Before before yes do you think they were gearing up because obviously now the exporting stuff is so tricky from the uk into europe they want to promote lamb farmers i mean me, my, my manager and i still don't understand yeah. what that was for <laughs> we still to this day don't understand but i mean to be fair it's definitely still a lie i don't know if i've ever actually told a lie on social media i, I social fully media, just exposed lie. myself here a life lie Am I getting paid to be on this podcast? Because I'm just exposed. Absolutely These are exclusives not. with Natalie Fitness. <laughs> you're staying. <laughs> you're staying in our Chester Home Hotel. True. Yeah. True. So you know, like we're great service. You, yeah. We, we've Amazing. Always, we've always done ours. Mine was. I can't remember my life. Mine was the um, the the young gentleman in school. I put dog shit in his pants and went and told. Oh, I heard that. Yeah. What was mine? But that lie? wasn't a that. I feel like that wasn't even a that wasn't even a lie. I lied to the to the head office. Yeah, you so did. They shit yeah. yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I re really, I was quite good throughout life. I'm just good. No, your lie. What was my your lie? Your lie was not coming into school sometimes because you had swim practice. That was oh my God, lie. Yeah. I used to lie saying I was at the doctor's or had an appointment Such and I a wasn't. I was, I was having a nap because I was so tired from swimming. Um, but uh, Grant hasn't replied, has no, he? Hasn't. Okay, so Grant's obviously just you know we'll just maybe just remove him from the fellowship group after this <laughs> after this podcast. No, we were We love you, Grant. We're not really going to do that. I had a lovely question, I think, to finish the podcast on. And it does wrap up quite a lot of what we've spoken about today. What's been the best yet most unexpected benefit from you getting into fitness? So an unexpected benefit. I mean, there's apart from meeting th- that's me. Lit- <laughs> that was the first thing that came to my head. But I was like, listen, I've given too many compliments today. Hmm. Most unexpected, but benefit. I don't know if this is cringy. No, because it's quite a like it's 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 a personal thing. That's great. Me realizing this is going to be cringe. I'm going to cry. I feel like I'm going to cry. No, me realizing that I have potential. That's great. I th- I think a lot oh. of people realize that from fitness, though. So. Yeah. But from someone that thought they were the shittest. But th- this this comes back to my original question of how we started the podcast of about fitness and why you didn't believe in yourself. Looking back at childhood, was was there anyone who told you at a certain point where you can think, I did sport and I got negative feedback from it? Or was there anything from kind of like family where just your family weren't a sporty family? Is there anything that you can really draw back onto why that self-belief might not have been there in the first place? I mean, potentially... Maybe because like we always like mocked and laughed and joked at the fact that like my brother was the sporty sporty kid and I was the non, I was like the couch potato without looking like a couch potato. I was may, maybe it's just because that's always been the thing at home. She took the identity. Sporty, not sporty. Yeah, and it and it's like sometimes we laugh back and my brother's like, it's so odd that you're now the sporty one. After growing up and me being that one that just hated it, like hated it. But yeah, I think it's because I just, I had this, this thing I made up in my head that I'm not good at it. Like there's no point, like I'm a waste. The way I would see it is I'm a waste when we used to do team sport. 
don't pick me because I am a waste of a person on your team. Honestly, no joke. I, I think what you've probably almost done there then is taken the identity that people painted you with. And well, I've painted it myself too, I think. Yeah, but you've lived up to that then, haven't you? It's like that kind of label. Yeah. And then I, you, you've had that like self-belief. But realistically, you, I think g- genetically you're very much suited to, to sport. Yeah, but I never knew that. I, I thought, know. I thought like, <laughs> you but know, I, I just wasn't blessed with that. I think it's a good, I think it's a good <laughs> thing that you realized that you enjoyed and loved fitness because... Yeah. I think the fitness space would be a worse off place about you in it because you're a very positive, happy person. But there's a lot of people in life who never realize that. There's a lot of people who go through jobs, careers, uh, sports, hobbies, maybe, maybe not sports and hobbies, but never really enjoying what they want to do yeah. and never being good at it because they've never tried anything yeah. else or they've been told you, you that you're that person, you fit that pigeonhole, yeah. you shouldn't do that. Whereas you've kind of like got to a, a place later in life i said later in life not really later in life because we're, yeah, we're, we're a different, young. different yeah we're a different generation now and you've gone oh fuck i'm just gonna try it yeah and sometimes by just trying things is when you realize that you know what i enjoy this and i'm good at it i think that's the one thing that i have because i know that i went from zero to 100 if there's anything else i now try in life you know like i've done this once i then i can try anything and yeah. if I fail, I fail. But I'm I'm all for trying things that I potentially may not be good at because this was the number one thing I thought terrible. But it's even the first time you got on a bike. No, that, I'm terrified. Well, look at you now. Do you know what I mean? So giving something a go. Yeah. And I still think it's actually really lovely that you use graphics in your YouTube <laughs> thumbnails so you still have a little bit of every now and then every now and then and i think that's really nice and the things that you've drawn so it's still there and then you did take this huge risk essentially it was a risk going from this to that and it's completely paid off and you're a pleasure and we met you and we love you very very much i love you both (laughs) (laughs) for our listeners i think they already will follow you and know exactly who you are yeah but where, where can, can find me? Find you? <laughs> so my Instagram and my YouTube is both exact and TikTok. Oh, both yeah. exactly all three are the same. Nutty foodie fitness. Easy. A lot of them Easy. will be meeting you tomorrow because we are this evening I'm off. So excited. After we've, been, we've been speaking about this for weeks on the podcast. We've finally got the micro school meet up at the gym shot lifting club, which is tomorrow. So we're all heading up to Birmingham today. Yes, we are. And so if excited. you're if you're there, say hi, even though this podcast comes out after. <laughs> but um, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching on YouTube and on Spotify, for listening on Apple Podcasts. Please leave us a review because we love a we love a five star review. Five it's star. really quite nice. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you tag myself, Ben, Steph, and the podcast, and we'll see you in next week's episode. Whoa. Can I just say thank you so much for having me on? Like, it's such a pleasure to be on, not in a biased way, the best podcast out there. <laughs> Honestly, bad. thank you so much. Cal, Cal pay, yeah. pay her later. Okay. Yeah, pay, don't tell anyone we're paying her to say that. So. And also, you were so nervous start, at the start of this podcast. Oh my God. You were really, you kind of didn't know what to say. I feel like I've not been nervous in a very very long time you know like when you're at school you've got presentations you've got things all the time i don't feel like i've been nervous or put in a, in a situation where i've been nervous for a long time and this was quite good for me to mm. you know it's good to, to come out of your comfort zone and I actually why do you say that thing i was because i hold your podcast to such a high standard i didn't want i didn't want the quality to to go down you as a result to you know as a result <laughs> sure. of me because you have such <laughs> insane athletes and such yeah, amazing you people are. you are don't self doubt yourself because you have been we've been obviously wanting to get you on phase but we wanted you officially in the house the house and the studio which you are all the time anyway you're going to be here on christmas day you're literally going to turn up on christmas, christmas day i'm going <laughs> to Merry Christmas! <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, guys, for listening, and we will catch you in next week's episode. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.